So, Arkham Asylum is not the best fictional character mental health facility out there. In fact, it might actually be the worst. I'll enjoy dissecting your brain, Miss Kyle. But the one thing we all assumed they got right was the Joker's diagnosis. The Joker is a psychopathic, always chaotic evil clown who kills and steals strictly for the lulls. But it turns out, that's just what he wants you to think. Hello, I'm Will Larius, the therapist, founder and CEO of the fictional character mental health co-op, where we diagnose all of your favorite people from TV shows, movies, and video games, and treat them with evidence-based practice, most of the time. In our last episode, we welcomed Bruce Wayne to the co-op and showed that not only does he have a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder, but put forth the theory that each villain that Batman defeats in the Dark Knight trilogy is a representation of one of the symptom categories of his disorder. But while the similarity between Ra's al Ghul and Batman is pretty easy to establish considering they're both angry men out for vengeance, the Joker is presented in the Dark Knight as the complete opposite of our new patient. Bruce is a traumatized hero obsessed with order and justice. The Joker is a psychopathic clown obsessed with chaos and mayhem, at least at first glance. What I hope to demonstrate is that not only is the difference between Batman and the Joker superficial, they actually have the exact same psychological issue. But first things first, the Joker is not a psychopath. For those of you who saw our diagnosis and treatment of patient Walter White, you'll recall that psychopathy is not necessarily the same thing as antisocial personality disorder. When it comes to ASPD, the Joker actually hits a pathological grand slam in meeting every single one of the diagnostic criteria. But ASPD has more to do with criminal and antisocial behavior than it does a person's internal personality. That's why it's a little easier to define than psychopathy. There are several different definitions of psychopathy that psychologists debate over, but all of these definitions have three personality qualities in common. These qualities are a lack of empathy, a habit of exploiting other people, and egocentricity. Egocentricity is just a nerd word for Cause I love me, love me. Now here's where we start to see that there's something wrong with psychopathy as a clinical explanation for the Joker in The Dark Knight. The quality that all psychopaths have in common is a strong self-preservation instinct. A psychopath is not necessarily violent or even a criminal. They're just less likely to be dissuaded by fear and shame when it comes to getting something that they want. But that's the thing. Criminal or not, a psychopath is primarily concerned with meeting their own needs. Burning money to make an ideological point, standing in front of a charging motorcycle, allowing a murderous man to point a gun at your head do not seem consistent with the egocentricity that you would expect to see from a psychopath. Now to be fair, you do see self-defeating behavior from psychopaths, if they're exceptionally impulsive or have below average IQs. Uh, uh, oh, what's wrong with him? But that is not the Joker. The bank heist and the escape from the MCU both demonstrate that not only is the Joker willing to delay gratification, but is a very intelligent planner. And before you say it, yeah, I know that the escape from the MCU should never have worked if several people in the Gotham Police Department had just done their jobs correctly. But remember one of the most important principles in diagnosing people is taking into account their social context. And the Joker's social context is that he is a character in a blockbuster film where highly trained professionals are all complete idiots for as long as the plot needs them to be. Derp, 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 derp. So, we can be reasonably certain that the Joker is not excessively egocentric, and thus we can be reasonably certain that he is not a psychopath. So if that's true, then what is he? My take on the Joker's diagnosis is based off of a fan theory that's rooted in the Joker's obsession with creating chaos. Looking at him in the Dark Knight, it wouldn't be that surprising if underneath all that clown makeup was M. Night Shyamalan. Some men just want to watch the world burn. This guy is obsessed with the twist. He's going to get the money back. He burns the money. He wants to kill the Batman. He loves the Batman. His whole time in the movie is dedicated to contradicting expectations. Therefore, even though he gives contradictory information about his origins, we shouldn't just assume that he didn't tell us. If, when we expect the Joker to speak about himself, he speaks in generalities, then we should look for where we expect him to speak in generalities to get information about himself. In other words, we shouldn't look for his origin story here, but here. You know, what, you know what I noticed? Nobody panics when things go according to plan. Even if the plan is horrifying. If tomorrow I tell the press that like a gangbanger will get shot, or a truckload of soldiers will be blowing up, nobody panics. Because it's all part of the plan. According to this theory, the Joker is a severely traumatized military veteran. I mean, that is an assumption. For all we know about this clown, it's possible that he was cripping back in the day.
But when you combine this with the fact that he shows the type of hand-to-hand -hand combat skills that would suggest basic training, he's able to evade detection from law enforcement despite having a distinctly scarred face, and that he's extremely proficient with automatic weapons, rifles, and... What is that, a bazooka? These all suggest that before he became the Clown Prince of Crime, this man served in combat, and this is where he got both his physical and psychological scars. He developed disdain from civilization and order itself, which his experience has taught him to believe is hypocritical. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. I realize this is a lot of conjecture. Without a fleshed out backstory, we can't give a formal diagnosis for the Joker. Now, if we were to get some backstory from somewhere, we certainly could. And let us know in the comments if you would like to see a diagnosis for the rebooted version of The Man Who Laughs. But for now, Bruce Wayne is our patient. And this theory tells us plainly what part of Bruce's PTSD the Joker represents. The Joker is the avoidance cluster. Normally, when you're talking about PTSD, avoidance refers to what we call situational avoidance. That is, if something bad happened to someone while they were walking down a dark alley, situational avoidance would look like that person making sure they never walk down another dark alley again. And clearly, that's not the route our patient is taking. Another, more subtle form of trauma avoidance is called emotional avoidance. This is where the traumatized person will avoid engaging with their emotional response to the trauma and the other difficulties related to it. According to studies, when men display this aspect of trauma avoidance, it usually involves a type of identity transformation, where they put on a superhuman persona that keeps them from feeling vulnerable. In other words, instead of avoiding the dark alley, they become the dark alley. This extreme avoidance reaction is a better explanation for the presentation of the Joker that we see in The Dark Knight. While the Joker's chaos for chaos sake doesn't really make sense as a presentation of psychopathy, it does if he's deliberately embodying the shadow archetype. The concept of archetypes was popularized by psychoanalyst Carl Jung. According to Jung, Archetypes are symbols that often appear in ancient mythologies. These symbols represent concepts that are essentially elements of the human narrative. The shadow archetype represents those wild forces outside of civilization that threaten to destroy both civilization and humanity. When the shadow appears in mythology, it is often set up against the hero archetype. This is called a chaos kampf. Chaos kampf is a central part of mythologies going all the way back to the Bronze Age. Bruce Wayne is deliberately embodying the hero archetype in his Batman persona. As a man, I'm flesh and blood, I can be ignored, I can be destroyed, but as a symbol, as a symbol, I can be incorruptible, I can be everlasting. This is why the battle between the Joker and the Dark Knight is so compelling. It taps into a story that humans have been telling each other probably for as long as we've been telling stories. It's Chaos Comp. It's Ra versus Apep. Zeus versus Typhon. The internet versus 4chan. <laughs> This fight is a dramatic retelling of humanity's struggle against the abyss. It's extremely engaging, incredibly moving, and very, very sad. Remember, all of this is these two guys' attempts to not have to deal with the realities, complexities, and limitations of being a whole person. Because an archetype isn't a whole person. It can't be a whole person. Real people are just too complicated to be summed up by these symbols. And you see this in the people that are all around Batman and the Joker. You see honor among thieves and corruption amongst cops. You see compassionate criminals and murderous moms. That's the irony of Batman and Joker trying to become pure symbols of chaos and order. It's not transcendence of humanity, it's just avoidance of it. The gods that they've become are less, not more, than the men that they were. And as long as they're stuck cosplaying Chaos Conf, they will never make any progress in recovering their full humanity. So, while the whole hero we deserve thing is confusing, as far as it concerns Bruce's particular problem with trauma, it's just what he needs to get out of this avoidance dance with the Joker. By deliberately corrupting the image of Batman, he prevents Batman from being the hero archetype. Granted, the way he does this kind of turns Batman into the dying god archetype, which lends itself to a messiah complex, and comes with its own set of problems, but you know what, I'm gonna call that good because I'm Bruce Wayne's therapist and I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? Ring the notification bell to see the conclusion of Bruce Wayne's trauma journey. If you're curious as to why Sonic players might be more likely to have ADHD than Mario players, click here. Don't forget to like and share this video with other psychology and pop culture enthusiasts. I'm Valerius the Therapist, thanks for watching.